Hello and welcome back to Lorcana Villain. My name is Baker and I am the reigning, defending, undisputed Lorcana set champion. Lorcana YouTube, acknowledge me. Sorry, couldn't resist, but welcome back to the channel. We are here today to look at the top 16 deck lists for a 290 person event that took place in France, uh, hosted by Luda Toiter, who we've we've covered events by these uh, these guys before. But yeah, 290 players. I'm nearly certain that that is a new record for in-person attendance for Lorcana, so that's awesome to see. My information today, as always, well, as usual, uh, comes from inkdex.com, so huge thank you to them for being a fantastic fantastic source of data. We've got 16 deck lists to get through. They're quite a good variation of ink, so let's jump straight in and take a look at the lists. This set champion's content is sponsored by Card Market, so check out Card Market for all your trading card game needs. So in first place, we have our one and only EA Tempo. Just win the game, which was being piloted by Kevin, um, a deck that's no stranger to, to success. Recently, we uh, did an interview with Artabax, who came second in a very large online event hosted by The Pack, the first event that took the um, two-game format into, into, in, into application. So once again, EA Tempo doing really well in a huge field. This is the only person that piloted to these specific colours. Um, so let's take a look. We've got four copies of Rafiki, really important as a one drop, being able to hit that three number. Two copies of Shona Boggs Followers to be another additional one drop to fuel our bounce cards and to help us thin our deck and draw more cards if we really need them. Also, of course, running four copies of Cursed Merfolk and four copies of Flynn Rider. Flynn Folk, that's what someone suggested I use as a name to uh, to group these. But yeah, questing high and making our opponent discard cards. Obviously the snake and the fox to bounce our bounce our characters and to have, give us some more board control. Three copies of Maleficent for the additional card draw. Three crab to boost damage. Better crab, one of the best cards in the game. Really, really is. It's like it, it, I'm, a, I'm such a fan of it, even at a four count. But yeah, putting in some work here. We're also seeing the one copy of Pinocchio to have a bit more board control and be able to answer import like in the mirror being able to take out the if you were on the plane you went turn one Rafiki against their turn one curse merfolk we can get rid of that straight away um the Ursula Deceiver of all and then just important cards like Ariel's Docks Arthur's things that we need to just get rid of straight away so I like the one count of Pinocchio Artabax said that they wanted to play Pinocchio but ended up making a mistake with their deck list and ended up not being able to play it didn't hurt them they still came second but it was their intent it was his intention to run it um and Kevin clearly putting the talkative puppet to some use. We've got four copies of Ursula to snipe those songs. Be prepared. Whole new world. Grab your swords. Friends on the other side. Anything that's going to help our opponent level the field or gain more cards, we take it away. Three copies of Kick Cloud Kick for some more board control. Bouncing characters with two strength or less. Back to the player's hand. Ursula, Cursed Merfolk. A lot of these low um, low cost characters the kit is going to help offset. Four Rabbit for the draw. Four Goat for the lore. Two Yzma to be a... We don't have many cards that just say goodbye to threats and just immediately remove things. But Yzma can do it if there's something that's really got to go or we can bounce our own characters to give it, uh, give ourselves an additional two card draw and again the fact that she quests for two is nice and a 4-4 four, four stat line. Four friends on the other side three, three mother knows best going to work really well with the four copies of Ursa Deceiver of all who when she sings one of these songs you sing it twice and shuffle that, um, and not shuffle it in, you put the song to the bottom of your deck. So friends on the other side, draw four, mother knows best, bounce of two. And we are running three copies of the Queen's Castle. Move there for one, seven willpower. Draw a card at the beginning of your turn for every character there. So this can get you some insane card draw. And the two passive lore is really nice. Uh, it demands an answer or it's going to put in a lot of work. So yeah, pretty similar to the list we saw from Artabax, obviously, uh, except the Pinocchio and a few count differences. But yeah, EA Tempo putting in another really strong showing. So who congratulations to Kevin. Going on to second place, we have the first of our Emerald Steel Discard. This is Bucky Discard, though. I should have put that in the name. The rest, There are more Emerald Steel decks to look at, um, discard versions, but most of them are running more the specky sort of list, like uh, Friar Tux and things like that. But yeah, this player opting for the Bucky, who's going to let make a, make our opponent discard a card if we play a Floodborne, Floodborne while he's on board. So that's going to be Jafar Dreadnought, Beast, uh, Tragic Hero, Champion of Sherwood, Robin Hood, uh, Giant Fairy Tinkerbell, and 
Stout-Hearted Cinderella. So all these cards are going to help us uh, make our opponent discard. Of course, the 4-4 Robin Hood line, a, bit, uh, a nice one. It's our only one drop. And the Robin Hood, just fantastic stats, letting us gain lore, drawing a card when he's banished. He hates to see Madame Medusa, but he doesn't mind seeing Along Came Zeus. And of course, Prince John here, whenever we are discarding, we're hoping to draw cards. He's got ward, so he's hard to remove. And the two lore, if we are safe to quest, can be quite useful. So yeah, while we're making our opponent discard cards through Bucky, we're drawing cards. We can also make them discard through Sudden Chill and Hypnotize, both of them making the opponent discard a card. Hypnotize allows you to draw a card. On top of that, Sudden Chill doesn't, but it's a song so that we can play it a little easier. We got four Benja respecting items, the fishbone quills, the spell books, the sleepy's flutes, um, all sorts gonna help to remove those, and questing for two is nice. The four dreadnought, as I said, being a floodborne to trigger Bucky, but just really nice stat line. Four willpower survives a lot of early threats, three strength takes out a lot of early threats, and card draw is king. If we can banish something through challenging, then drawing cards is always good. Tragic hero beast for some more accelerated card draw. Again, it's not always the safest thing. As soon as you put him down, he's an immediate target for Madame Medusa if you went second or just let Storm Rage on any sort of chip damage card just to offset the additional drawing. But you've got to at least make them have that. And if they sometimes if they do that, then they're not using it on another character that you might want to save. And you just got to make them have it. So if you can get the double draw off, then this is really strong. And of course, if you do take the damage and become a 7-5 beat stick, there are worse things to be. Giant Fairy Tinkerbell is strong as ever. One chip damage on everything when she's played. And when she destroys something, uh, banishes something in a challenge, Puny Pirate lets us put another two sprinkle damage on another character. Character. So we've got ways of pinging different characters around the board. And Cinderella Stouthearted is the last of our Floodborns who will trigger Bucky. 5-5 five, five stat line, quest for three, resist two, and singing sword. When we sing a song, um, we can challenge ready characters. So our song is a sudden chill, as I mentioned. Strength for a raging fire, we've got four copies of. There's a more, straw, uh, more board control, especially if we've got a nice wide board. We can hit, hit some really nice numbers, high numbers. And four copies of And Then Alarm Game Zeus. This card's too strong to not play at anything less than a three count. I added syllables, but still, I, I've said this all along. I think this is such an important piece. Like, what cards do you have that are just immediate? Goodbye. That that got to go. Um, so, yeah, I've been advocating for three or four long games for a long time. And, yeah, max counts here. We're also running four copies of Improvise, one cost, inkable action, chosen character gets plus one strength, draw a card. The plus one strength can sometimes matter, but we're not really playing it for that. We're playing it for the card draw. We really like this deck, but because it, our discard really is mostly built into Bucky. Yes, we have Hypnotize and Sudden Chill, but we're not playing Friar Tuck or Lucifer or things like that. So we are pretty all in on Bucky, and like for an optimal curve, we want to see this turns two or three or both. Um, so yeah, just being able to play turn one Improvise, it, some, sometimes because you didn't have the Robin Hood and sometimes even if you do have the Robin Hood you would prefer to improvise depending on what the rest of your hand is so yeah I like this so yeah all these Floodborns going to trigger Buggy to discard we've got additional op for di for options for discard nice high counts of everything falls all around the board so yeah it looks like a really nice clean list huge congratulations to them on a second place finish Coming into top eight for our next Emerald Steel discard. A few differences. This looks a lot more like the, the Specky list. Um, a lot of these characters are the same. We are playing four copies of Friar Tuck. Four cost inkable, two, four quests for two. And when you play this character, the player with the most cards in their hand chooses and discards a card. Be wary. If you play this and you have more cards in your hand than your opponent, you have to, dis dis uh, to discard. Um, but yeah, uh, like... It's got a nice stat line. The four willpower is not easy to get round. It's another aggressive quester. And so, yeah, Friar Tuck has definitely proved himself as uh, a good addition to this deck. We're running two copies of Pete, who has Ward, which is always nice. Five cost inkable, three, four, quest for two. If you play an action, he gets plus two strength. We are playing uh, a few, well, not loads, but we've got enough here. Sometimes the plus two strength is just going to be enough and become, uh, hitting for five will be what we need. Um, but, if we are, but if we're able to play another action and boost his strength even more, then we are questing for four which is fantastic so the bad guy finding a place here we've got the beast the robin hood like no bucky in this list um still a large count of floodborns not as many no big tink sorry no um dreadnought jafar i meant um but still floodborns are just good in and of themselves we are running four copies of the robin hood daydreamer six cost inkable four five quest for four just an aggressive quester like yeah they can have an answer to it stays out he's out of madame medusa range which is nice um the good thing about him as well is even if they do Pinocchio or just challenge him after questing then your four um strength isn't in, in, isn't 
insignificant. Words are hard, bros and uh, bro, my friends. Words are very hard. But yeah, Robin Hood proving himself, putting in some work, just being an aggressive quester to help us catch up will be that final leap that we need to close out the game. So you love to see it. The four tink, two copies of Rise of the Titans, three cost ink, will banish chosen location or item. Items and locations are pretty good, if you didn't know. Four copies of Sudden Chill here for some additional discard. No hypnotize. Um, so we are pretty, like, yeah, we're Friar Tuck, we're Sudden Chill, we're Cursed Merfolk, that's it, really. I mean, Ursula as well, and of course, if they challenge, yeah, if they challenge into Murph, um, into Flynn folk, then that's going to trigger it. Ursula's going to trigger it. Um, again, you can get a, dun a double sudden chill discard off of Ursula. So yeah, this discard package seems enough to me. Forward, let Storm rage on for the two ping and draw a card, and strength for a raging fire for hopefully a nice big ping if we've got a wide board. And of course, if Ursula sings these, then she's going to do it twice. And sometimes just the draw two from having Ursula sing, let Storm rage on, is enough. So yeah, the deck not the first. First time we're seeing a deck like this do well and led to another successful finish in a big old field. So congratulations to them. Two more Emerald Steel discards to go through. We have a top 16 list here. I'm not even going to attempt to try and say this name. I will I will only get it wrong, but props to you. Um, similar looking list to Prior. We're running four copies of Benja here. We are um, utilising two co uh, four copies of two cost inkable. Strike a good match, draw two cards, then choose and discard a card. So helping us filter through, find pieces we need. And again, if Ursa sings this, then let's draw four and discard two. Uh, four copies of the Rise of, of Rise of the Titans in here. Really respecting locations and ideas items and just saying no to them. Four copies of Baboom, which is growing in popularity. It's just nice to, like, that two damage is just useful against so much of the meta. So many, so much of the meta depends on its early, uh, early board. Um, so this is nice, and of course, of course, it's inkable as opposed to fire the cannons, which is not. But yeah, other than, other than that, list looks largely, largely the same. So congratulations to them. And our last Emerald Steel discard, uh, we have Romaine, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. Again, very similar. Um, this person opt to use it, opting to utilize, I've lost. The English language has left me. It's just gone. Uh, it's because I'm moving tomorrow. I'm so tired. And so, I've done so much packing and I've still got to edit this later. But we we, we push it on. Uh, four copies of Captain Hook for a bit more early board control. Being able to hit that magic three number. Also four copies of Mr. Smee. Which, yeah, I'm surprised not to, I'm surprised to not see Smee in more of the other um, list that we've just gone through. Even if you're not running the Captain Hook, I just think Smee is so good. The stat, the stat line, the questing, the ability really isn't bad enough to offset how strong this card can be. Um, but yeah, so love it in this list. And yeah, everything else looks largely the same. Two Babooms, the four Chills, the standard songs. Once again, the Robin Hoods, the Prior Tucks, the Beasts, three Bengers. Yep, looks good. Congratulations to them. Moving into top four, we have the first of our Steel Amber Songs list. So we're playing four copies of Borum Sensation Cinderella. No Stout Hearted in here, which I think I'd like to find room for. Um, but what do I know? I'm, I'm, I'm not really a, a, an experienced Steel Amber player. But still, the Borum Sensation, very useful for being able to sing Let the Storm Rage On and Strength for a Raging Fire, nice and cheap. We are running a 4-3 line of the Queen. The Queen being able to manipulate the strength of onboard characters. Good for making our smaller hitting characters actually do a bit more. Nice to push, it up, nice to push us up to those numbers that we need for locations, like Queen's castle and mcduck manor things like that we're running the 4-4 robin hood line these are the, like again the abilities are really good and of course this deck wanting to sing five cost songs as often and as cheap as possible for like whole new world and grab your swords and along came zoo's four cost but still that's a four cost song that we can sometimes sing on the cheap so yeah robin hood's going to help with that the queen line's going to help with that you love to see it two copies of mr smee again no captains in here but not necessary um smee's just really good four copies of Ariel to find songs and to be another character that can sing them on the cheap. Two copies of Benja respecting the items. We've got four copies of Rapunzel. We don't have to be all the way in on a whole new world. For our card draw, we can just get a nice, hopefully, draw three out of Rapunzel. No Beast Tragic Heroes in this list, which is not uncommon to see. We've seen a lot of successful Steel Amber Songs list opting to just cut the beast entirely, so that's fair enough. Um, what is more interesting is we're seeing two copies of Simba, Rightful King, Five Cost Ingable, Four Six, Quest for One, and Triumphant Stance. During your turn whenever this character banishes another character Sorry. Whenever this character banishes another character in a challenge, opposing chosen opposing character can't challenge during their next turn. Um yeah. It's out of Medusa and Zeus range. That is the best thing that I can say about this Simba straight away. Um yeah. I mean fair enough. I don't know, I feel like I just want I, I, I would just want more Tinks, more Smees things like that. 
I don't... So we're also running three copies of the Simba Fighting Prince. Seven cost, Inkable, five, seven, quest for two. When you play him and when he banishes a character in a challenge, you choose one of these effects. Either draw two cards and then discard two cards, so just filtering, finding key pieces, or you can deal two damage to a chosen character, so just a bit more ping. We saw this Simba come up before. Again, it's out of Medusa and along came Zeus range. But quest for two, and I think the ability is so much better... Yes, it's more, much more expensive than this five-cost Simba. But yeah, not sold on this Rightful King, personally. I think I would be upping the counts of Big Tinks, me, things like that. Um, I don't mind the Fighting Prince. I, I quite like him. Three copies of Server Stitch to be some additional card draw. The Four Storm Rage on. The Four Strength of a Raging Fire. We've talked about these songs. And then three copies of Lantern, which, again, coming... Um, we're seeing more and more in Steel Amber Songs lists. Um, clearly not bothered by an increase in item removal like rise of the titans bengers you see hard-headed beasts in a lot of steel decks now um but no these lanterns are still putting in a lot of work getting giving us more bang for our buck when it comes to ink so yeah great to see steel amber songs doing really well congratulations to arthur Next up in top eight, we've got Van, also with some Steel Amber songs. A lot similar here. Only two Rapunzel. We're on the 4-4 Queen line. We are running two copies of Cinderella Stouthearted to go with that Ballroom Sensation Cinderella. And we're seeing three copies of Tragic Hero Beast here. The three Big Tink. Um, no Simbas. Never mind. Still seeing two Surfer Stitch. I think the last list was three, but still seeing the Surfer. We're seeing three copies of Bare Necessities. I would struggle to run Steel Amber songs and not run Bare Necessities. I think the card's just so good. Two Cost Inkable Song. Ch an opponent she reveals their hand discard a non-character card of your choice so yeah i like the three count here three three of our ping cards three along came zeus the four whole new world the two grab your swords and four copies of lantern in this deck yeah very similar um no simbers and a high count of things like tink and we're including the stout hearted and the bare necessities but yeah lantern the common denominator so far so congratulations to van Two more Steel Amber lists to look at. In top 16, we've got Warren. Um, two copies of Mr. Smee. The two Benja. We're seeing two Hades. Four cost, uninkable. Three, two, quest for one. When you play him, return a character card from your discard to your hand. This is a great card, helping you find that. Um, maybe it's an aerial to dig for another song. Maybe it's an early Rapunzel that you played. Maybe it's late game and you're recycling Cinderella's, Robin Hood's, things like that. So yeah, I, or, And they can recycle each other as well against discard and things like that. So you'd love to see it. Three copies of Bare Necessities. We're also seeing two copies of the world's greatest criminal mind which is a three cost ingable song banished chosen character with five strength or more so this hits stout hearted cinderella it hits maui it hits maleficent monstrous dragon um one or two other targets i'm forgetting off the top of my head but more importantly lovely synergy with our queen uh commanding presence because we can just do the plus five strength to one of their plus four strength to one of their characters which hopefully will get them within range of our uh, three cost song four let the storm rage on three strength for raging fire once again four along came zeus more and more players seeing this as a higher count the four whole new world the two grab your swords and four sleepies flutes the only thing i've really disliked about the steel amber songs this so far is i still think grab your swords should still be at three personally but again like that i I'm, i've have some experience with steel amber songs but i'm going to assume these players have more um so they're, they're all saying two be enough but yeah a slightly different list but looking really good but i think the only steel amber song list utilizing the flutes um letting us gain lore every time we sing one of these songs so yeah you'd love to see it congratulations to warren and last but not least in top 16 we have thomas um a lot similar here we've got four copies of future king simba one cost ingable one two quest for one and guess what when you play this character you may draw a card then choose and discard a card so it's just helping us find pieces that we need whether it's the aerial one of the floodborns for the queen of the robin hood a song whatever it is so yeah just an additional one drop i don't hate at all two cinderella stout hearted to go with the warm sensation cinderella the four four queen the four four robin hood quite a um very tight uh, character list mostly all fours um, except obviously the two cinderella but we're seeing one copy of Chernobog, evil doer 10 cost uninkable nine nine quest for three you pay one less for him for each card um a character card in your discard and when you play him all of those character cards in your discard are shuffled it back into your deck and yeah if, if any deck is going to cycle through a lot of characters through a lot of whole new worlds then it's going to be this one so i 
I'm sure this put in some work. The four bare necessities, the one greatest criminal mind, the four four of storm and fire, the four Zeus, once again, play three or four. Whole new world, just one grab your swords is very novel. Um, we're also seeing, once again, the, I say once again, not in this set of lists, but we saw this recently in a Steel Amber Songs list. Um, the Pride Lands, two cost uninkable, two seven. Um, characters get plus two willpower while here. And if you have a Prince King, Prince or King here, then you pay one less to play characters, two to move there. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of players just deciding that this is kind of just doing the job of flute a little bit better. Um, just with the, just giving you additional draw and it requires a lot of attention. Um, yeah, Pride Lands has been popularized recently, I think by, was it Zan? Yeah, I think it's Zan that's been playing a lot of Steel Amber songs with Pride Lands, a fantastic player. And I haven't seen all the Poland lists yet, otherwise I would have done that video already. Um, but I'm, I think it was first or second place was running Pride Lands as well. So yeah, if you're a Pride Lands, um, if you are not a Pride Lands believer, all you got to do is bow leave. So yeah, huge congratulations to Thomas. Going all the way back to top four, the first of our Ruby Amethyst control lists, we have Matthew. We're seeing the four Rafiki, four Shonabog's followers. Um, again, I said recently, I really like a 1-3, a Mini or an Olaf. Not just because it's protection against teeth and let the storm rage on, but it gives you so much utility alongside with Crab. It just lives longer and just does more work. But I understand the Shonabog's followers. The advantage here is like turn two, three. If you really like, if you missed ink or you're missing a, a two drop, a three drop, whatever it is, then you can help to dig for that. So I respect it. Four copies of Kuzga, I'm a big fan of. Sometimes we don't want to play uh, Madam Mim Snake turn two. Sometimes we just want to go wide and it's nice be to be able to pressure the board without losing card count because obviously he draws a card when he's banished. The four snake, the four fox, pretty standard. Just one copy of Pinocchio, talkative puppet, one of my MVPs for Ruby Amethyst. Just helps you just control the board so well. Shuts down some decks completely. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm opting for the two or three, but Matthew, just one was enough for them. Three copies of Maleficent for some extra draw. The crab, as I just alluded to, with the plus two to, uh, plus three to strength so so good just gives you such good board control helps you reach those location numbers you'd have to see it four copies of stylish surfer mini i think four is fine i think three is enough because against steel decks this is very rarely your three drop of choice quite often it's it's going to be crab maleficent or fox sometimes it's fine just to make them play their chip damage cards um I, but yeah i'm finding three to be enough but four is respectable four goat four rabbit four maui two three split of the ladies in red which i think is perfectly fine i think i opt more for the three tremaine two medusa but i've got a lot of friends that prefer it this way around so i respect it just one copy of maleficent monstrous dragon hey i think that's perfectly fine um sometimes it's just going to be ink but sometimes in the late game if you do see it at the right time it's going to put in a lot of work um even if it's a slow turn so yeah fair enough four friends four be prepared one spell book i i cut this because um who was it that made this sentiment i think it was george um someone said something on the lines of just that spellbook is good against the mirror bad into the field so that's why i've ended up cutting the spell book but yeah if you do play a lot of mirrors you're going to be glad to see the spell book and two queen's castle i respect it i was on two for the longest time myself i've moved around to four i just think this card is way too good but yeah this looks really really strong huge congratulations to matthew Next up in top eight, similar 4-3 um, of Chernobog and Rafiki. Seven's probably fine as one drops, but I don't know. I, I'm, I'm on eight, and I'm considering going up to more and just adding more one threes. But if you hit them, then this is perfectly fine. Four Kuzco is nice. We're seeing a three Pinocchio. I'm a big fan of this card. Just puts in so much work. The four mini again. We are seeing two copies of Jim Hawkins. Five cost Ingable, four, four, quest for two. When you play him, you can rush in a location with four uh, cost four or less. And when that lo whenever a location location is played Jim can move there for free so if like this just makes Ruby Amethyst a bit more offensive and hey if you can if you if you're against things like um Sapphire Steel is where the castle really puts in a, a lot a lot of work and uh, like steel decks in general um and yeah this just allows you to pressure more um which you're less scared of if you're not playing into things like be prepared or you know there's less counts of grab your swords as well so less board clear um i mean there's a long game zeus but okay they deal with the jim hawkins the castle's still sitting there um so yeah i think this is fine four maui three three of the ladies in red i think it's respectable four friends on the other side no be prepared i heard i've, I've just noticed that i mean kind of respect it right you top eighted Big, biggest in-person field. Fair enough. 
I would not recommend not playing Be Prepared. Have I got? Have I made a mistake? No, I've not made a mistake. We're just an aggro mid rangey version. Don't know, man. Be Prepared is a pretty good card, but hey, you top eight without it. I respect it. Congratulations to them. Next up in top eight, we've got Jeffrey, um, who's playing the four count of Pascal, uh, Rapunzel's companion. One cost of a 1-1, one, one, and if you have another character in play, then he gains evasive. We're seeing no stylish surfer minis. I actually really like this Pascal, and there are worlds where I considered this. Not only as, as an additional one drop, um, but again, it's a way to answer the opposing stylish surfer mini without putting down your own. Um, like, if the Pascal is down, then all you need is a crab, and she's dealt with. Um, and it helps you cheat out early lore. So I, I, I do want to try the Pascal. I think there's a lot to be said for that. Um, two Rafiki, I think I'd still want to get this to four. Uh, and two Mini Stylist Surfer. So still eight one drops, which is the same as what I play. I don't know. I would like this Rafiki count higher. Um, if anything, I would like I would I, I would just play ten one drops. I'd be like four four two two Pascal, something on those lines. But I really like the inclusion for Kuzco. I think he's pretty standard at this point. Two Pinocchio. I love to see four Crab. I think there's a lot to be said for running four Crab. It's just too good. It really, really is. Um, the four snake, the four Maleficent, the four goat, the four fox. We're seeing four Jim Hawkins here with only two copies of Queen's Castle, but four copies of Agrabah. Three cost, inkable location, one to move there, five wall power, and two passive lore gain. Hey, I'm a champion for... Um, yes, I am. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I am a champion for Agrabah, is where that was meant to be going. Um, I, I did a recent video called So You Want to Play Control, where the list I featured in that video was running Agrabah. I'm a big fan of it. If they can't answer it, then uh, it puts in a lot of work. But I do think, I don't know, I think if you are expecting a lot of Ruby Amethyst, then like Merlin Crab just kind of laughs at this, um, assuming on your turn. Well, no, maybe not. I mean, like if you go turn one, I mean, if you start Rafiki. Then, yeah, if you start Rafiki and then have turn three crab, then Agrabah doesn't feel great. But, I mean, like, you just don't play it at that point. You play, you either ink it or you play it later on in the game after, um, like, after a beat prep or something like that. So, yeah, I, I am a fan of Agrabah. Just two Medusa, no Tremaines in here, which I think is a shame. Again, just, like, not just for the ability, but she's another two... Um, she's a two lore quester. Um, we've got the four gym, obviously, and we're, we are running four copies of Maleficent Monstrous Dragon, so fair enough. A heavier top end, four friends, four be prepared, um, and yeah, the locations. I, I think I'd want the Queen's Castle to four. But yeah, I don't hate Agrabah. I'm a fan of it. I'm a big fan of the Rapunzels being in here. So yeah, congratulations to Jeffrey. Two more Ruby Amethysts to look at. In top 16, we've got Clement with the four Rafiki, the three Mini, and the two Olaf. Love it. I think this is a great count of one, co uh, one drops, along with four Crab. Like, this is board control to the Max, two Pinocchio, the four Kuzco, the four Snake, the four Fox, the four Mini Stylish Surfer, the four four Goat and Rabbit. Uh, just one copy of Jim Hawkins here. I think it's perfectly respectable along with the four Queen's Castle. Um, if you can get off a Jim Hawkins rush in the Queen's Castle play and they can't deal with it, then that is value. Four Maui, two, three of the ladies in red, which I think is great. Four friends and four be prepared. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this one drop, uh, this count of one drops and four crabs. So congratulations to Clement. And our last Ruby Amethyst list in top 16, we've got Nicholas, the 4-4, Olaf and Rafiki, same as me, 3 Kuzco, the 2 Pinocchio, the 4 Snake, 4 Fox, uh, 4 Rabbit, 4 Go, only 2 Crab. In my last video, I, after I top 8 Dark Sphere, I was like, I ran 3 Crab, I feel like 2 should probably would have been enough. And I very quickly changed my mind. Um, I think now it should be three or four. So yeah, I'm going to start saying that from now on. I, I do think this should be a three or four, but still led them to top 16. A three-two split of the ladies in red, a three Tremaine, which is the way I would play it. Three Maleficent Monster Dragon for a larger top end. Two Teeth and Ambitions. We've not seen a lot. I don't play the Teeth and Ambitions. I'm not a huge fan. It can feel really good. It's good for aggro. It's good if they, like, for the Ballroom Sensation Cinderella. Um, for the Blue Fairy. But... Other than that, it just always feels a little bit mid to me personally. But better players than me play it, so I do respect it. That's just my humble opinion. Four friends, four be prepared, one spell book good for the mirror. I'm seeing two copies of Maui's Fish Hook, which has dropped off hugely, by myself included. It's a good card. Um, it's not it's not that I think it's bad by any means. Like I just built my Ruby Amethyst deck to just be to do what it wants to do the most consistently and be less 
reactive. To be fair, this can this isn't just a reactive card. It is like it's it, it it does a lot. I still like the fish hook. It was a reluctant cut, um, but I opted to drop it. But it is really strong, giving evasive to characters, giving plus three strength, which is all, all like I talk about how good crab is. Maui fish hook does the same thing, and you can do it for three for free if you've got a Maui down. So yeah, I still respect the hook, but I've moved away from it. And two copies of Queen's Castle. So yeah, another fantastic looking list. Congratulations to Nicholas. And we have two lists left to look at. Both of them are Amethyst Steel. Only one of which is featuring Jafar. We've got Alexis uh, taking advantage of the Striking Illusionist. Seven cost Inkable Floodborne. Four five quest for one. Evasive and power beyond measure. During your turn while this character is exerted. Whenever you draw a card. Gain one lore. So this deck is built just to be Steel Am Amethyst mid-range control. But it's real nice to have just an insta win card uh, in your deck. Um, gaining lore through any of our card draw. Through Blue Fairy, Jafar, Merlin, friends on the other side. Side, but we're going to get the most value by singing a whole new world. So yeah, just an insta win we can get out of Jafar. Three Raw Vizier um, to shift on to, who is also evasive during your turn, so has use in and of itself. And other than that, yeah, we're just mid-range control. Two Captain Hooks for some uh, for a nice one drop. we got a 4-4 Robin Hood line. Four Blue Fairy, who's going to let us draw a card every time we play a Floodborn, which is our Dreadnought, our Tragic Hero, our Robin Hood, our Yzma, our Tinkerbell, and our Jafar Striking Illusionist. So that's going to help us draw lots of cards. We don't have to do the whole new world. Two copies of Mr. Smee for the sm for the stats. Two Maleficent for some draw. Two Crab. Two Benjamin for the items. Only two Rabbit. I'd like more personally, but hey, fa uh, fair enough. Two Yzma, um, again, to say goodbye to threats or to bounce our own characters and draw some more. We are running two Smash. You don't, you don't see Smash in a lot of Steel decks. I really like it. I think the fact that Smash has fallen off has let a lot of other decks kind of cook a bit too much um, when they don't have the immediate answer to like early game things docks are for, like it's why it's, why, it's the reason Pinocchio is so good that you can shut down early um, stuff early um, obviously Pinocchio can also exert a bigger character and you can just challenge for bigger numbers I lost my trailer four completely there the point is that I like smash and I'm glad to see a two count of it here three friends on the other side three along came Zeus and then the four wheel and the three grab your swords so yeah steel amethyst mid-range with an insta win condition once again Jafar not hugely represented but still sneaking into top cut you love to see it congratulations to them and finally, in top 16, we have Lucas, who's got the four Shadow Box followers, the two Rafiki and the four Captain Hooks. So nice early um, early lines. Uh, the two Snake, sorry, the four Snake, the four Fox, two Crab, four Goat, four Rabbit, the four, uh, four Maleficent for some additional draw, two Pinocchio for some additional board control, four Benja for the items, the four Friends, the four Storm, the only two Strength of Raging Fire, three Elong Came Zeus, one Spellbook, and four Queen's Castle. Yep, Steel Amethyst, still just really good. Drawing lots of cards, gaining lots of lore, Lots of like cheap characters that can control the board. Queen's Castle can do a lot of your like. There's nothing here that quests for more than one. oh Smee. Smee is our only thing that quests for more than one. Um, but you've got a spell book. Queen's Castle is going to put in a lot of work. Goat's going to bounce and do a, uh, put in a lot of work. So, as always. We love to see it. Congratulations to Lucas. And that is it for the top 16 deck list for the Luda Toiter 290? Yeah, 290 person event. Our biggest in-person uh, tournament so far, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I may be giving wrong information there. If it's not the the biggest, it is, it is top three easily. So definitely data to pay attention to. A nice variety in deck lists, which we always love to see. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll say it again. I am moving literally tomorrow. It's 7.30 p.m. I'm going to edit this tonight, get it out. Uh, and then I am moving tomorrow and I'm not going to have internet for the first five days. I'm looking for all the Poland lists. I hope they become available soon. If they do, then um, I, I'm, I'm going to use my phone as a hotspot so that I can get some internet access to at least get the lists and make my video. Um, and then I may just hotspot to my PC to try and upload. I will try and get the Poland review up even without standard internet. I, I'll do what I can. But other than that, expect content to pause slightly uh, while I move and get my internet back. Um, once again, I want to say such a huge thank you to everyone who showed support for my... Um, my video all about my attendance and victory at the set championship. I really wasn't sure what to expect, um, how people were going to react, but it's been all love, immaculate vibes, so I appreciate you guys. That's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to the channel, please subscribe for the champion's content.
hit the like button to show your support, and we'll see you soon.